Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You're watching episode 9, Quick Sort in Real Life. So today, we're going to take a break from, you know, just talking about sorting algorithms. Today, I'm going to grab a deck of cards and I'm going to do a quick sort on that deck of cards. Now, just to be clear, we're going to ignore the suits. We're going to treat all the cards as simply numerical values. The aces are taken as 1, the knaves are taken as 11, queens as 12, and kings as 13. So without further ado, let us jump right in to perform quick sort on cards. So okay, here is my deck. Now, what I'm going to do with quick sort today is, obviously I'm not going to be doing the whole left to right and swapping thing, because there are 52 cards in here, and I don't want to be spending all day just, you know, going through the entire process. So instead, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick a pivot, and for the rest of the cards, I'm just going to select. It will either go to the left, or it will go to the right. So once I'm done with one pass, through this deck of cards, I am supposed to have a left sublist, a right sublist, and a pivot in the center. And of course, if you remember from yesterday's episode, any card can be picked as the pivot. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick the first card as the first pivot, and I'm just going to go ahead and just sort the rest of the cards to the left and the right of the pivot. Remember once again that there are no suits. In this case, I'm only going to use the bare numeric value. This means, of course, that every number will have its four equal entries. So what I'm going to do is, for example, there is a four here. When I encounter a four, I'm going to place it to its left. So of course, the larger cards go to the right, and the smaller cards go to the left. Without further ado, let us begin. So that concludes our first pass. Our pivot is in place. Everything on the left are smaller items, whilst everything on the right is larger. Now remember the recursion that occurs with quick sort. As long as a left sublist is available, that will be sorted. We will only look at right sublists when left sublists are no longer available. Now I understand that no part of the coding actually says that, but that is how the recursion actually pans out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to organize these cards. I'm just putting this nicely here and I'm going to push everything to the side. What we're going to do now is we're going to repeat the same quick sort process for this other sublist. Oh, but before that, I'm going to just take note that this pivot is in place by putting it face down. Once again, we pick the first card as the pivot and off we go. So all right, there you have it. Everything on the left is smaller or equal and everything to the right is larger. Once again, we have created a left sublist, so we're going to sort the left sublist. Pivot and sort. Now, to be strict about this, I should continue breaking this down further, but this is going to take forever if I actually do that. So, by inspection, it's all aces here, we're actually done. Now, I'm kind of cheating with this, but I guess it's a liberty that I can take so as to not waste too much time. All these are twos, they're done. And not only are they done, they stack on top. Similarly, this pivot goes there as well. Now, this is an assorted list, but it is the next available left sublist, which is why I'm going to sort this stack now. Once again, pivot and split up the rest. Everything here is sorted, so it goes to the pile. Similarly for these fours, and this last pivot. So we basically backtrack all the way to the right sublist of our first pass. Once again, I'm going to pick the first card for use as a pivot. This is a pretty huge stack, so well, off we go again. So once again, left and right sublist, done. We have a large left sublist. So once again, pivot and off we go. Once again, 
pivot and salt. Oops, it's okay. Notice what happened earlier? Because of the way we actually handle equal numbers, putting down 6 earlier puts everything to its left. So this is one example of when doing quick sort is actually not very efficient. And remember that I called it a divide and conquer algorithm. And in this case, not a lot of division was going on. Unfortunately, we have another 6, so the same thing is going to happen. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to push all these cards to give myself a little bit more room and we'll continue doing whatever we were doing. Once again, pivot. So by inspection, all fives in a list. Five, pivot already in place. Six, right sub list of one item. Previous pivots that were already put in place. And next available left sub list. As always, pivot. Once again, pivot. And this is what happens with quicksort. You create more and more separate left and right sublists. And, well, the process just goes on. So okay, just at that very moment where we run out of space, well, things start to clear up again. So that goes into our stack. Last pivot, stack. Last left sublist, already sorted, stack. Pivot, left sublist, pivot. Next left sublist. Next pivot, and finally our very last right sublist. Everything is now sorted. And just to show you that everything is in order, here are the aces, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, j's, q's, and case. And there you go. That is how you quick sort a deck of cards. And there you have it. That is basically sorting a deck of cards using quick sort. This episode is more for fun than for anything else, to be honest. But there you go. The things I share with you on this show can actually have practical applications. Not for sorting cards. I don't think there's anything practical about sorting a deck of cards. But hey, if you ever have the need to sort I don't know, papers or stuff like that, you can actually apply the things I've shared with you in this episode. We will of course return to the more serious stuff next episode, but this is basically all I have for you today. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, if you find this video helpful, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching Sir612TV.